So good evening, everybody. You are here at a new human experience podcast, and this is a live recording. And um, the topic for tonight is mirror, mirror, and it is July 9th, 2020. So dear friends, the month of July, this is the first time that the podcast is, um, is holding in the, the month of July. So the, the, for the past couple of months, I've been just choosing one big topic and take the whole month to um, explore that topic. So this month, the month of July, the topic is really relationship. The, the, the big topic is relationship. The, the title for tonight is Mirror, Mirror, because tonight I want to actually focus on the most primary of all relationships, which is the relationship that we have with ourselves. And that is why the title for this week's podcast is Mirror, Mirror, because when we look into the mirror, so if you recall, um, let's say this morning or maybe just a couple of, of um, minutes ago or the last time you went into the washroom, when you get a chance to look into the mirror and look at yourself, how do you feel when you look into that mirror? Do you recall? Do you enjoy your own unique beauty or do you focus on your faults or imperfections, whether it is real imperfections or something that you actually um, are just, is just imperfect for you, whereas someone else may find it to be okay. So how we um, feel about ourselves when we look into the mirror, it's really a window into how we feel about ourselves. Um, while we are on this earth, we are actually uniquely creating our lives each and every day. And um, of course, now, like the past couple of months, we, the whole of, of humanity has really co-created a very unique situation. I don't want to really um, name the situation, but I just want to, to um, kind of say that it's really unique. We've actually never had this experience where a, a lot of, pretty much a lot of the, 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 the parts of um, around the world, we are in some sort of lockdown or at least very um, slowed or, or a lot of isolation. So actually it, it gave us it gave each and every one of us more of an opportunity to be by ourselves. Unless of course, if you live with someone else in the house, then you would be, um, but you would still be seeing and being with just a very um, limited and select group of people, if not by yourself. So we actually, it's a wonderful opportunity for us to look at the mirror and look into ourselves and really start to look at how we, what a kind of relationship do we have with ourselves? When we look into the mirror, do we, do we, do we accept ourselves? Whether, um, no matter what faults it is that we may see or think of, or do we tend to focus on what's wrong rather than focus on um, the, the, the 95 percent that is good or do we focus on the five percent or maybe even less than five percent that's less than perfect so that really is the the, the, the the opportunity when like before all this happens I know that for myself I have a lot of ways to um, distract myself even though I, I wouldn't classify myself as being a very social uh, person, I don't have you know, tons of friends and nothing like that. However, even with the, the smaller social circle that I tend to keep, it's, I, I still manage to find a lot of distractions for myself. I love going to movies. I love um, just going out um, by myself to just have a nice meal, just 
just enjoy that sensation of something um usually i i would go for um vietnamese food which is very aromatic or indian food or something like that something that i i'm definitely i don't know how to cook that very well and i would go and enjoy that experience and and that or sometimes I may want to go and do some shopping. So all these little things, uh, things that we do to distract ourselves from really looking at the, um, the parts of our life that um, probably would require, may require more, I would say, attention than we would like to give it. So I... I don't know about everyone else. I'm speaking especially for myself is that, you know, for me, it's like just, you know, go for a movie every week. And um, so for a period of maybe about two hours, maybe a little bit more than that, I would be able to just be in another kind of story, totally different from my own. And so when I... Um, when all this stuff happened, movies, um, I can't go to movies anymore, all that. So I'm, I start to um, really have to look at myself and really looking at um, all the different aspects of my life a lot more closely because, you know, I have some free time on my hands. <laughs> and so this, this really actually helped me to um, release a lot of the old stuff and 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 that's the really what the regardless of whether um, you think that this is a negative times that we're going through or not the the positive things that I am personally getting out of it is I was able to really um, cut down on the distraction and start to look at those things and um, and also, I have the good fortune to to um, read a couple of good books that really help me to have really have more of an um, insight into how my mind works. And I would actually want to um, just read a, a short paragraph for all of you. This is um, something that I I read recently or i should say reread recently that really like i didn't quite caught it the first time i read this whereas the second time when i'm reading it and now the third and fourth time reading this book it actually started to hit me is that's what we are doing and and it's so brilliant of of what it is that's happening this time so this is from the book of the call. It's called The Illusion of Money, and it's by Kyle Cease. And this is on page 48, about um, halfway down the page. So I'm just going to read this paragraph. So it's not going to take too long. So here it goes. The process of developing skills like appreciation, acceptance, and surrender is the real work and what I hope to show you how to do in this book. Like I said, there's no quick fix affirmation or crystal that is going to do this work for you. These are skills that require true patience and intention to develop. But when you put in the work of expanding beyond your old protective story, you start to experience the game of life in a totally different way. You begin to move exponentially. You go from trying to control the external world through manipulation and force into first becoming aware of your reactions to the external world, expanding into a space of true acceptance and surrender, and finally allowing inspired creativity to fill the space that you've made in that moment. This is how you truly move into flow. This is how you create massive abundance. This is how you change your world. So what I love about this paragraph is that it really sums up um, how we can really transform our relationship with ourselves is, is to develop those skills that, um, 
the very the it's it's really about loving ourselves and i have to confess that i i didn't even though all the 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 spiritual journey that i've been on the the last you know decade um if not longer has been really getting to know who i am however it's just more recently that i i actually become more um present to the 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 reality of how little i know about how to love myself and um i don't really have to look too long to or too far to or too hard to realize that you know i actually don't quite love myself because uh, for one thing if anybody of you uh, if any one of you notice your internal dialogue if your internal dialogue is anything close to mine i can tell you that it's it's definitely not um peaceful at all it's not accepting it at all it's it's like having this completely narcissistic um i would say bitch <laughs> sorry excuse my language this narcissistic um person that's screaming at me at everything that i do and every time i look in the mirror that this person would be telling me all my faults and uh, and and uh, like all the things that has gone wrong and and so and it's in it does not stop um when i don't look at the mirror it's like everywhere i go it, this this voice has been telling me everything that is wrong and a lot of the times it's not it's not about i didn't think it was about me it was actually my reaction to the outside world however of course it's all about me everything that i react to the outside world is also about me as well because it's about how i relate to myself and how i relate to my external environments and so when <clears throat> i read the 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 paragraph of what cow sees mentioned is that is that we are trying to manipulate the the world outside um like if so let's say um we are so desperately trying to manipulate what's happening outside to make sure that we feel safe and we feel loved we feel whatever it is that in order to um keep us at a a peaceful state or at the very least a, a dull um i would say a dull role at from the that internal dialogue that is it's really trying to critique every second in our life so that really is how um i have been living my life for a long time and that is and i suspect i'm not the only one it's a cuz i when i talk to clients that i work with they have uh, some very similar uh, internal dialogue if not exactly the same they may focus on different aspects or may use um other kind of equally colorful language however that is um a lot of people live like that internally and even if they don't live like that internally is that they they may not hear the voice but they can feel the um vulnerability they can feel the fear that is there it's is energetically without words all these um fear this this feeling of being um discomfort in a sort of you know um unaccepting of what's outside and also of of the the vulnerability of how we feel inside that's why we are trying to manipulate the outside world to make us feel better however it's not going to work it's never going to work because the the thing that we have to to work on is really that relationship with ourselves inside when we have that much more i would say genuinely loving relationship with ourselves 
and we start to develop that acceptance for ourselves and also um, to really get to know who we truly are beyond what <clears throat> our um, our environment or the people around us tell us um, that we should feel um, or, or that we should think. When we start to let go of all of that and really start to not just look at the the face that's staring back at us in the mirror, but also look deeper is to look at the consciousness that is shining out of that pair of eyes that's looking back at us in the mirror. And that we, when we go deeper in and get to know that part of ourselves and start to really. Um, exercise the muscle as, as what um, Carl sees mentioned that it is it is a, a state of mind is a, it is an um, a choice to accept who we are and not look at the the face that we we stare at in the mirror and start to notice the the, the imperfections or even if when we stare at the mirror we thought oh we look beautiful however it's it's really not the face it's really how we feel about ourselves do we truly love ourselves despite how we look do we truly love ourselves despite um all the feelings that we feel is do we accept ourselves? And that is really the, what we, the, the things that we need to learn in order to develop that relationship with ourselves. That's not about, um, <clears throat> not about loving ourselves just because we look a certain way or loving ourselves just because we did something or not loving ourselves because of any um, thing that we did. But getting to the point where we can know that we actually are worthy of love, no matter how we look, no matter what we've done or what we have failed to do, is really to accept all of that and to look beyond all of that and to just start to love ourselves unconditionally. And and when we can start to develop that muscles to um, push back when we when we hear that internal dialogue that says, "Oh my gosh, there's another wrinkle," or "Oh my gosh, there's there's more gray hair," or "Oh my gosh, there you have a uh, bag underneath your eye," or "Oh my gosh, um, why don't you put on some lipstick or or whatever." Or, or why? How come your hair is looks so disheveled, or, or whatever? So those things is when we hear that internal critic, is to start to get to the point where we don't listen to that anymore. We when we notice it, we start to push back and say, "Well, yes, um, my hair is out of place. It's um, it's." my hair seems to have a, a mind of its own today. So, wow, how cool is that? Um, so, I, and, and let your hair have that freedom to be whatever it needed to be because, well, it's such a warm day. So maybe the heat will do something to your hair that it's, um, it does not do on days when it's not as hot. So, all of these things is to start to give that allowance and stop listening to that internal critic. And when you hear or when you start to realize, oh, that internal critic is saying something and I'm reacting and I'm, I'm noticing how you feel. Because a lot of times we may, we may not be aware of the, the dialogue. Maybe the dialogue is not um, it's not noticeable, but the feeling is always noticeable. Uh, I remember for the longest time when I 
I, I would really feel um, threatened when someone who is, you know, has you know, looked better than me or has more talent or has some accomplishment um, about me that I would feel a sense of inferiority. And, and a lot of times that the sense of inferiority actually um, come up as being, oh, I hate that person's guts. I remember one of my best friends, um, well, before he be, she became my, my best friend, I, I, well, the first time I, I met her, I really hate, hated her guts. Why did I hate her guts? Because I just met her. I, I, she hasn't done anything that, that really um, warrants such a response from me. But she's such a beautiful person that I simply hated her. And I didn't know that. I didn't know. I didn't realize at the time that 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 you know I I dislike this person. Actually, underneath it, this, so it's it's this inferiority um, complex that's playing there, and so um, and of course, when I started um, on my spiritual journey, I started to to get at what's underneath. I. I really tease that out and start to let go of those things. And along the way, she became my best friend and um, she still looks beautiful. And, and so all that, but now I don't feel that sense of inferior, inferiority when I see her because um, I see through all of that. And I know that if I ever, look at someone new and I feel I don't like this person, then I would dig deeper and know, oh, okay, um, why would I do that? And, and start to look at what's underneath that, that feeling. Because underneath each feeling, there's usually um, some sort of a belief that somehow makes you feel a certain way. So you may not know the, the the conversation of the internal dialogue but you you can still feel the feeling and when you start to give yourself time to work through the feeling the feeling of maybe it's a sense of inferiority or maybe it's a sense of fear or maybe it's a sense of um uh, not feeling secure it's like all of that, it's really part of being human. However, it's not a, um, I should say that it's not a, it's not something that we cannot change. It's just that we, when we are unconscious of all these other beliefs that's bubbling underneath that when we have not looked within, when we have not processed, all those things that um, on the surface, all we feel is fear or insecurity or anxiety. And when we start to look underneath all those and start to process all those and drop beneath all those, then we can actually drop um, through down to the core of who we are, which is simply, um, that relationship with ourselves do we have this loving relationship with ourselves and when we have this we truly have this loving relationship with ourselves then the the fear starts to drop off the that sense of inferiority starts to drop off all that sense of anxiety would start to drop off because when we have that relationship with ourselves that's based on unconditional love, then um, it will start to, we will start to get back to being connected with our environment. It's only when we are separate from our environment, when we feel that sense of separation, that all the fear and all the other rest of it comes when we get to the core of it, when we get to back to really loving who we truly are, and 
allow that love to extend beyond ourselves so that we can truly look at someone else and be able to see ourselves in them and be able to start to see the love, the unconditional love, and let ourselves feel that unconditional love and connection, um, then we can start to drop off all that vulnerable feelings, all of those off. And that is what all, of, so that's all of that, what that one paragraph from um, Kelsey's book really entail is to develop those skills to not just stay on top or stay uh, above our personality and, and all those, not just to feel the feelings or not just to listen to the internal dialogue and, and take all that the verbal abuse, um, mostly from ourselves, is to start to, to um, develop the skill to accept ourselves, the, develop all those skills in order to be able to be with ourselves and not be um, violent with ourselves and not be and not allow ourselves to talk to to ourselves in such a, a negative and um, I would say abusive ways and when we start to to drop all of that then that sense of peace and acceptance would be able to to come up I'm not saying that it's going to be easy because um, I've been doing it for a while and it's just recently that I actually was able to get deeper into it and really realize and, and see how many ways that I've been so abusive to myself. And um, I remember just recently, I, I say it's um, actually Tuesday, um, I was listening to uh, Sifu James. Um, Sifu James actually took us back to his, his um, spiritual space, which is because he came from the, the planet of love, which is 528, or that, that frequency of, of 528. And when he took us there, I was, of course, completely out. I was, I was, um, I would say, snoring pretty, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, most of the time, but when I woke up, uh, like all the, the 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 whole thing was over and everybody signed off already. And so when I woke up, though, when I actually went to bed after that, that I do feel I, uh, this the sense of um, realizing this internal sense of realizing. Oh, I haven't really. Um, learned how to love myself properly yet and i think that was that was all um due to the part that even though i slept through it but you know a part of me has actually came back from from that um planet or or that that vibration and really brought something back with me is is that that um sense of unconditional love for myself and it has helped me in the last couple of days to, when I feel this, this um, I would say, internal critic, that I was able to more easily than ever to start to, to look deeper and to start to really hunker down to develop those skills to accept myself and accept not just myself, I think, more so is is the um, the outside the people that I meet as well because they are all just everyone else and and including all of you who are here are simply different aspects of me. So this is is I would say I would really encourage all of you to to notice to start to notice the next time when you look into the mirror or even when you see someone else outside of you, 
when you see someone else is to um, notice how you feel about them. Do you feel a sense of unconditional acceptance and love towards them or do you not? And if, if you really um, feel not, then don't judge yourself. And of course, um, try not to judge the other person as well. But instead, look deeper at what's the story underneath that that makes you feel this sense of dis-ease. Because all of this, all of this, all of the stories is actually um, boiled down to one thing. And it's really boiled down to a fear of death. The fear of death, it's, it's um, as a body, as if you live as a body and think of yourself as this body, then that fear of death is actually very, um, it's very reasonable, it's very logical. And we would do all that we, we think we needed to do in order to make it, um, I would say more safe for ourselves. And so that's why um, a lot of people out right now is they, they behave in a very, um, like if, you, if you're more awakened, if you're more spiritually aware, you would think that they believe like um, they're crazy because they're in so much fear. However, it's really have compassion is that they are behaving the way they behave because they are totally living in their body and thinking that they are their body. And that's why they, they cannot see outside. They, can, they have no idea that um, there is something beyond that. They have no idea that they are much more than that. And so they, from their point of view, what they are, the way they behave, they are behaving is actually, um, it makes sense to them. However, when you start to do the inner work of looking beyond, looking beyond your physical body and start to look at and start to have that insight into the consciousness, the, the divine part, the spiritual part of you, to really start to see yourself as your soul rather than yourself as the body, then you'll be able to drop into that, um, that peace of being able to be at peace with yourself, no matter how you look in the mirror, no matter how everyone looks outside, you'll be able to see and recognize that they're all just different aspects of soul, of spirit as well. So that's all I have to say about um, relating to ourselves uh, that, that most primary of all relationship is our relationship with ourselves. And if you would start to work on that relationship and start to get that relationship with yourself right, or I should say to a, um, a much better place, then all the other, other relationships will start to fall in place so much easier.